Constantly having to create fresh marketing content for your audience is really time consuming. What if I told you there was another way? that the content part of marketing your art could be much simpler and much faster too. Want to know how to make 20 pieces of content out of just one? Yes, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to repurpose your marketing content so that you can create those 20 pieces out of just one. Crazy, I know, but I think you're going to love it. Now, in case we haven't met, my name is Sophie. I'm an artist, entrepreneur, and art business coach helping you to build a profitable art business from your creative passion. If you find my videos useful, please consider subscribing and give this little video a thumbs up too. Okay, so let's talk about repurposing your marketing content. What does that actually mean? So imagine you write a blog about your latest painting collection or perhaps a how-to topic related to workshops or courses that you teach. So this blog that you've written is your original content. And from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually pull apart this blog and we're gonna make it into lots of other types of content. So the exciting part here is normally you'd post that blog right onto your website and maybe you would or you wouldn't give us a shout out on social media. And then you'd go on to thinking about the next topic and the next topic. So this is where this strategy comes in so useful. You've put all your time and energy into writing a blog and let's actually do some things with it. So repurposing is taking your original content, breaking it down into lots of different forms of other content and then putting it out into the world in lots of different ways. So I'm gonna walk you through an example in a minute. But before I do, Let's just mention blogging a moment. So I haven't talked about it an awful lot, but I do have a playlist right here on my channel. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, I could quite fancy doing blogging, I've got four videos at this time of shooting that will walk you through why the benefits of blogging, how to put a blog together, how to get your blog seen, etc., etc. So I'll definitely put a link to that playlist below this video. And if you're interested, just check out this card here. That's the seven steps to writing a blog. Because when you write a blog in that way, it just makes repurposing a lot easier. And you'll see why when you've watched that other video. All right, back to the repurposing part. So we've got your original piece of content. Now let's look how we can make those 20 pieces of other content from that one blog. So number one, you could make a YouTube video talking about the content from the blog. We have to remember that different audiences consume content in different ways. You might have worked out that your audience really likes to read, but you might have discovered that a section of them actually quite like to watch the video. Now, for me, I do this the other way around. Um, I actually create a YouTube video that you're watching, but then did you know that I also then make a blog version of it on my website and the people that like to read are over on my website reading the blog. So that's your first piece of content. And it doesn't have to be super long. Right? You can just be talking about the content. You're just doing it in a different format. All right, the second piece of content, you can make a YouTube short teasing out the fuller YouTube video and of course, for people who like to read the blog. We all love movie trailers, right? Just gives you the highlights. So why not make a little 30 second or 60 second YouTube short that's a teaser? It could be as simple as you talking to camera. Hey, I've got this full video. This is the topic I'm talking about and why it's of interest or it could actually just be some footage of you working if it's that new collection. Number three you could then go ahead and turn that into an Instagram reel. So from there, that same video that you popped out on YouTube, making sure you're not mentioning YouTube in that piece of video. So make sure that the video is quite generic. It can go out on YouTube, but it can also go out on Instagram. You can then package up and put it onto your Instagram. Maybe add some music in the background and make it look kind of more Instagram worthy. Now here's a top tip. If you do this the other way around, YouTube, not gonna love you so much. So if you make the reel first and you download that and upload it to YouTube, it's gonna have the Instagram logo embedded in your video and YouTube will downgrade you for that. So create the video on your phone, use a simple app to edit it, upload it first to YouTube and then put a different version on your Instagram reel. Number four, you can make an image graphic for Instagram that's actually advertising the blog. So you just make it like a little mini poster, blog title, blog, and then you put the details in the description and where people can go to click through and read the blog. Number five, use something like Canva, which I'm assuming you're doing all of this on anyway, and resize the post for Facebook. 
Now, yeah, you can post it out as it is square to Facebook, but why not use the Facebook platform a little bit more kind of organically, use the space, you've got a bigger space, you can make, you could simply resize it and just use up a little bit more of the space. Listen, you don't have to, you can simply post your square image on to Facebook, but I quite like to work within each platform's best guidelines. So you can just use Canva and the resize tab and resize it and move things around. You can even fit in a little bit more, bigger picture, more words, etc., and pop it onto your Facebook page. Quick tip here, of course, if you write the, the content first on Instagram and then all you do is post it to Facebook, you might need to go into Facebook and edit what you've written because on Facebook, you'll have a live link that takes you straight through to the blog. On Instagram, you'll have to direct people to your bio where they can get the link to the blog. So just a little bit of tweaking between Instagram and Facebook. The next piece of content you can create is an Instagram carousel. And by the way, all of this content can go out over a period of a week, two weeks, three weeks. You could even, if you really wanted that blog to be read a lot, you know, two months down the line, you could then be posting this carousel, for example, sending people back to that blog. So it doesn't need to be, the blog is up, I need to create all these 20 pieces and, and put it all out within a week's period of time. This is content you can spread out over a longer period, still drives people back to your website and back to that blog, which of course is exactly what we want people to do, right? So now you can create a carousel, again on Canva, and you can use, if it's a teaching um, blog that you've written, then you can just highlight your five or six teaching points, number one, and you give a high level description of what it is, number two, number three, you can put an image in each one, you can put a little further description in each one, a cover for the carousel that again, you know, is five ways to do, what do I always use an example? Watercolor painting. Five steps for watercolor for beginners. And then you can step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And then of course, the last one of the carousel post needs to be a call to action of where they can go to read that blog and or watch the video on YouTube. Next up, you can do a bit of resizing with your carousel as well. Now it depends how many images you've got. I probably wouldn't put all of them onto Facebook. Four look nice because they kind of show up in a nice sort of quadrant. So again, you could choose the cover um, and you could maybe even just put some of the teaching points onto one post. So you could resize it and make a few alterations. You can put all of the, all of the images up but they don't all show, people don't always click through. So I would, I would actually just kind of resize it, change, lose a few of them, and make that you've got four so they show up nicely on Facebook. Now here's a really simple one. You can simply take the URL to your blog and go over on Instagram and say, your little description, I just here's my latest blog, I'm talking about the following things, here's why, dot, 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 and here's a link to the blog. Now, if you structured your blog correctly, it should pull through the blog image as well so that people have a little bit of text and can see the image for the blog. If you're not sure how to do that, then you need to have a look at the platform that you're actually publishing your blogs on. You can always just use that Facebook graphic that you made earlier as the cover to your blog on LinkedIn. So that's super, super simple. So the next one you can do is you can go live either on Instagram or on Facebook or both if you feel like the challenge and just talking about the new blog. And I would do this around the time of publishing. Oh, I'm so excited, I've published a new blog to my website. This is what I'm covering. And if it is about the new collection, then you maybe just wanna give people a sneak peek. Here's a sneak peek to the new collection. I talk about the background and how I put that together on that blog, and here's how to get the link to it right now. Super powerful. You don't have to think about it because you've written the blog, right? And here's number 10 out of our 20. So you could take one of your own quotes out of the blog. So I quite like doing something like this. So if you've written a blog and you've, you've made a statement or a sentence that's sort of something that would stand on its own, make that a quote and put your name in it, make a nice quote graphic, again, using something Canva, make sure it's all branded to your, your brand, your brand aesthetic and post that on Instagram. Now you're gonna to say to me, but Sophie, you promised me 20. So here come the next 10. Now these 10 are all about Pinterest because you probably heard already, I haven't mentioned Pinterest. So you probably be sitting there thinking, what's happening with Pinterest? Because I mentioned on my blogging videos that a really good marketing partner for a blog is Pinterest. Why? Because Pinterest is a search engine and people are looking for inspiration, information, places to buy things. So in this example, they're looking for information. So the most obvious place to have 
pins around this blog is on Pinterest, right? And dependent on how many boards you've got on your account, you can be super clever with the number of pins that you put about this blog. So let me show how you can create 10 unique pins that are gonna work on your Pinterest account and all of them are gonna drive back to your blog article. Ah, uh, and maybe your YouTube video. So the first three pins you're gonna do are just super simple pins that are gonna be advertising the blog. So you can take the main image that you've created with the blog and make that pin sized. You can make the other two with different images, maybe different text. And it's also quite good to see which ones of those actually drive more traffic across to your blog as well. So you're also doing what we call split testing at the same time. That's a win-win, right? It's pretty good. So the next three pins you're gonna make are kind of highlight pins. So think about that carousel, look on your carousel and think, okay, I could take these bits of information off the carousel and pop it onto a pin. So pin obviously is nice and long, so you could actually put all the information from your carousel down one long pin and then you could create another one again with a different image or just two or three of the points so three of them around the content from the carousel two pins now that will send you back to the youtube video that you created about the blog you see how this is all working i hope you're getting really excited about this so again super super simple pins you can actually just pin your video um, directly so that's a kind of what we call a cheap pin and then the other one you could make just advertising a video with a little picture with a play button and, and all the nice things. The next one you can do is you can create an idea pin. So think about that video that you made earlier as a reel, as a short. You can use that video, you can upload images, you can do all sorts of things on an idea pin. So you can create an idea pin from any of the content that you've previously got that fits in that Pinterest idea pin format. I think you can upload up to 20 images. So you could use any images that you've already used and just resize them to, to, make, to make the little sort of story or you could use the video. And then of course, the 10th pin is you can create a pin around that lovely quote that you made. Now, when you upload all these pins, make sure all of them have the URL to your blog article. And don't forget things like the description, the title, all of the things. But if you're not sure about Pinterest, check out this video where I'm talking about Pinterest. I will be doing an updated Pinterest video this year as well, so look out for that. Again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the latest videos. So that's really, that's 20 ways. And you can probably hear from the ideas that I'm coming up for you is there's a lot more where that came from. There are a lot of other platforms that I haven't mentioned that you might be using. You think, oh, actually, maybe I could do that. I reckon you could go from 20 to 30 quite easily. And like I say, some of them you'd want to publish around the time of the blog going out, and then others of them you could just fit into your marketing plan going forwards so that you're constantly sending people back to look at that blog. After all, one of the biggest challenges when blogging is to drive what we call traffic, that's people, that's us, viewers, readers, over to your website to read that blog, right? We put all the energy and effort is making the blog, we post it up there, but actually anything that we can do to send people to that content is gonna be a benefit. So instead of coming up with endless different ideas, I'm really hoping that you're now gonna start thinking about how could I repurpose my content that I've already written? If like me, you make YouTube videos, look through your YouTube videos and think, oh, I did talk about these things, that was pretty popular. Maybe I'll pull out three ways to do this or five highlights from that, right? You can always create something out of content you've already got. Once you start repurposing, the amount is kind of endless. So there's your 20 pieces and I think lots of ideas for a lot more as well. So that's it really. Of course, the one thing I haven't mentioned and my loyal followers are all gonna be waiting for the E word, email. So we are taking as given that you're gonna be sending an email out to your list and encouraging them to go and read the blog. So that's kind of, doesn't really fit in repurposing, which is why I didn't put it in the list because obviously it's all part of your ongoing marketing routine but it's also vital that you would be sending that out to people who already want to hear from you, right? So we're kind of assuming that you're doing that. So I hope you've loved this video. As I say, don't forget to check out the blogging playlist below and the one on screen at the moment, that's your seven steps to writing a blog. So if you're all excited about writing a blog, then go and check that out. And don't forget, of course, it doesn't have to start with a blog. It can start with any piece of written or videoed content, but the content needs to be something fairly meaty that's got 
things that you can break down into smaller parts. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.